going to new locations where you don't know what to, to expect or what you're gonna come across and I think you know, I'm just super curious what's around the next corner or what's in the next country. Maybe we're gonna score. I don't know, it's kind of like gambling. I like taking a little bit of risk and just with the hopes of getting a big reward and like your chances are good to score big and find the best riding spot of your life. So continuing the search and the adventure for new riding spots, it's just really excites me. On this trip, we got Nico Vink from Belgium and Kyle Jameson from Oregon. Kyle's a very controlled, steezy rider, and he like throws down as well. He's a, a guy you go out with and you have fun and you enjoy and you have some laughs, and uh, he's the nicest guy on earth. Riding with Nico is different than riding with anyone else. You know, devil on a bike, has the need for speed, and loves to go big and scare himself. I consider Kurt like the teacher. You put Kurt in any scenario and he can he can shred it. He can look good and yeah, like you can't you can't argue a three time rampage champion really. It's like the most bad, baddest dude out there. We headed to Cerro Negro and perfect soil, perfect grade, nice and steep, perfect for bikes. This is exactly what you want to start this kind of trip with. It was good to get tires on dirt in Nicaragua and first day had like the best first day possible. The next day we went to San Cristobal. I couldn't even really explain it that well, but we were we were lost and we ended up in some village and there was a, a family there that was willing to take us to the top of Cristobal and we were like, well, we've been sitting in a van since eight in the morning, like we're gonna do something. So we start hiking and we got bikes, got cameras, everything. It's just rutted. We get finally get above tree line and we still had we weren't even halfway, I don't think. We went as far as we could. We got some shredding in.
out in the middle of nowhere on San Cristobal and uh, Kurt's in a lot of pain. You know, he's in the moment of, let's get me out of here ASAP. So he was laid out for about four days after that, but that was a pretty intense moment. We got the next day off, which was sweet. We uh, we have another like you know partner on this trip, Flor de Cagne, the local rum company, who's you know very involved in this country. They're not just making rum; they're doing it in a fashion where it helps the whole country. You know, they're they're genuinely love this country, and you can tell when they're helping us. And you know, they showed us the factory; they're making everything without polluting. We're just really honored to have them to help us and said, you know, why don't you take a day off, come to our factory, we'll give you the tour. And we got treated really nicely there. They, they opened up a straight up rum barrel for us and we tasted some 30 year old rum. You almost felt a little loopy just being in that room with all the barrels and then we sniffed this 30 year old rum and we were like, eyes were doing this. And then we were drinking it and then we were really doing this. No! Oh, okay. I thought, that, I thought that knocked over my, whatever that is, daiquiri. We kind of came here with an idea of a, one image of Mama Tumbo and us riding, so we already knew like this could be the best thing ever. On the other hand, Mamatumbo erupted like full lava two years ago. So it has like military gates around it. It's closed to the public. No one's hiked it in two years. We go up another dirt road that you can tell hadn't been driven for a couple years. Like things, things are getting like intense. You can tell it's like, okay, this is closed for a reason. And now we're here and we're committed. We started hiking. We, we witnessed some of the most unique places to ride a bike on earth, I, I would say. During that hike, we already seen the material was different on the hiking trail. It was super sandy, loose. We hiked for her. 30 to 45 minutes and then we got to the open faces and they looked amazing like rolling and some of the biggest open face terrain I've, I've been to. This, this is what we wanted. We came all the way to Nicaragua to hike volcanoes and you know here we are and found exactly what we wanted to see. We're gonna have a good time. The only, the only thing is we're here and we need to be up there. Yeah, we did like kind of a scouting mish. That's probably one of the best things I've written. <laughs> There's just that many good stuff there. Yeah, dude. Here we go.
It was great. We got a couple shots and felt good about it. Underlying pressure was building. It's like Mama Tumbo's got some gold there. A little bit more pressure was added because it was so sick. The stoke was high. There was like some crazy fireworks going off at night. We're all together and you know, we're, we're with Kurt as well. We're all hanging out and Kurt's still real stiff. You can see it in him. He knows that we had a good time at Mama Tumbo. We've told him at this point and, and we kind of just were like, here's the laptop, show him the footage we got and instantly he's getting a little looser. I'll go, I'll, I'll go check it out. You know, I'll get, I'll get up. We're almost like feeding him stoke and he's just getting looser and it's almost helping his injury. Like we woke up that next morning and everyone was on the same page. Like I barely slept. We were all just fired up. We load up the trucks, we pick up Sorgi, we make our way to Mamba Tumbo. We were really keen to get out there and nail that. We knew that the heli was gonna be there at three o'clock. We had a game plan. It was like, okay, we're gonna go make base camp at the tree line. Sorgi's feeling okay, he gets to the top all right. It's one of the best things I've seen, I think, riding like a Yeah, one of the like biggest open slopes you ever see. Yeah, yeah. for sure. The Rolling black pumice. And it's all good. Of course, I wanted to make it to the summit right off the top, but getting there, realizing how, how huge that volcano is, I knew in the state I was in, there's no way I, I'd be able to make it to the top. Nico and I lighten up our backpacks, load them with liquids, understand this is a humongous venture we're about to go on and almost feels a little bit eerie. We're about to hike to the top of this volcano that has been closed for two years to the public because it's active. We don't know if it's actually rideable. Nico and I are at this crux moment. What do we do? We were a bit worried about making the shot, if it would be possible to ride that top line or not. And we had another hour, and we almost needed an hour hike to make it there. So Kyle sacrificed himself and walked down and we split up. So I, I took the top line, he took the bottom one, so we would always get a shot. Probably one of the roughest hikes I ever had to do. Probably one of the dumbest things I ever did. Maybe, not sure yet. But it looks worth it. As you can see, there's smoke coming out of the volcano there. And that's what we're facing. Oh. I'm not trusting it very much. You see it smoking, I don't like the sulfur. So I'll just cruise down and get the fuck out of here. I'm not gonna wait for the heli, sorry boys. And my chain came up. So Nico made the decision to drop in. Okay, later. This was like a, a almost like a soul riders moment.
glad to be out of there, honestly. I didn't like the smoke, sorry. Getting to the bottom of that, I see that Kurt is waiting on the other line and I was super pumped and like, I was like, yes, Kurt's here. Like, so we'll get to do that run the tree of us. I hiked over, high-fived and waited for the heli. Yep. Just about to be the first people to ride down Mombo Tombo here. Yeah, the valley here is uh, pretty much socked in with sulfur. The volcano's been just chuffing out tons of whatever comes out of that thing. It seemed like there was a storm coming in. So heavy winds, rain, toxic fumes, rolling rocks. So there was a lot of turbulence going on. Like the heli just couldn't get close enough. Apparently pretty, like what I heard from those guys in the heli, it was pretty wild in there. The heli decided his time was up, so he just returned to home base. I say give it a 10 count and send it back. Okay, sweet. Get it? Yes, dude. Ten, nine. I was given the countdown, and I, I got to one, and he drops in, and I still stand there with the, the walkie-talkie in my hand. I'm like, Kurt, what? Hell yeah. Wait, wait, Kurt. Go, 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 go. That's so why I shove it in my pocket, <laughs> sprint to catch up with him. <laughs> took getting all the way down to Central America, Nicaragua, and hiking with our own feet and our bikes and our gear and all this stuff, just took just putting foot on the ground to figuring out what we actually could ride. You know, that's the beauty of this trip. That's what we're here to do. And we are the first to be doing this here. You know, we made the most of every, every experience. Just take it as it comes, because that's what you get and have as much fun as possible, and with our crew, that's really easy. Like, 